Hello everyone, Charlie here, and welcome to Academia School Simulator. Too many people asked for this for me not to at least try it. So, uh, this is a, uh, a very similar feel to Prison Architect. Sounds a little bit weird, but uh, if you're a fan of Prison Architect, you might be a fan of this. And uh, we're actually going to incorporate a little bit of Prison Architect influence into this school as well. So, Academia is a school simulator. You are building a school, managing it, and it's the same things that we'd have to do with managing a prison and things. It's that we're dealing with kids who are uh, having to go to certain classes. They have certain needs. They have certain drama between them, if you will. There's different grade levels as opposed to different security levels. Uh, you have freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Same thing as the American school system. And uh, grades 9 through 12, basically. And we're going to be creating a facility for them with a little bit of a twist. So our school is meant for troubled kids. Uh, troubled kids who, well, maybe they got in a bit of trouble uh, in their life. Maybe not troubled like they're having a hard time, but troubled like uh, they've done some things, man. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to make up a story, but I don't have one. Prisoner is one of the uniforms, and I think that's kind of clever, kind of fun. Um, so we can have school uniforms be these orange jumpsuits. Uh, so we have basically all the kids are prisoners. The, the problem with this, though, is it removes the personality for the kids. So I don't know. Maybe we'll let them have personalities so you can see sort of the, the different outfits and stuff that they come with. Some of them are going to come with, like, nicely dressed. Others are going to have gold chains around their neck and stuff. And it's all sorts of stuff. Anyway, so customize your school. We're going to go with fresh fish. Academy. All right, this is this is my I, when I was going with a prisoner idea. I think I am gonna go casual, but my the idea was to have them all be dressed in prison jumpsuits just because. Um, so Fresh Fish Academy. I have no idea what the school motto is gonna be. Honestly, don't know uh, like basically anything about Latin, and unless I look this up while I'm recording, I'm not gonna know what that says. So I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna leave it alone. Uh, primary color icon. We can change the different icons that are on this, which is kind of interesting too. And you can choose. Any oh, hello, pizza. You can choose anything you want for these things. So, I think I'm gonna go with uh, a pizza on that second one. We'll go a snake on the first one because that makes sense. Something interesting also happens, and maybe it's just my resolution playing 1440p. But when you click on three, it changes four, and when you click on four, it changes three. It's kind of bizarre. Also, three is in the four position, and four is in the three position. So something's weird's going on. <laughs> Something weird going on there. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so we're gonna change this one to. I see a griffin. Eh, griffin's fine. And then in the last one we can put it as uh, maybe these crazy faces like theater. So we're. We're green, too, I guess, so we're Slytherin. Sure, I guess we can go with that, too. We also have Gryffindor influence. I don't know. What the hell is going on, man? This is already starting off really, really great. Uh, this is my first playthrough for this, so don't expect a super big organization like you get in some of the Prison Architect videos and stuff, but uh, we're just going to give this a try. Like I said, there's a lot of people have asked me, and uh, oh, too, many, too many to ignore. School pet. This is the, the dog that is as close to Tesla as possible, okay? So we're going to go with this as the dog. And then the principal. You can choose a very variety of different principals, and each some of them have advantages, and some of them have dis disadvantages. Uh, and then there's just the standard principal, which is none and none. And I think we're just going to go with the none and none for now to get a feel for the game. And if you guys like this, it's the first video of a potential series. Uh, I am labeling this as a let's try, but... Uh, I, I am more more interested in a full series for this um, than maybe I am for some other Let's Tries. So if you like this, please tell me in the comments and uh, we can continue it if you're into it. Uh, otherwise, we can move on to other projects, right? Um, difficulty settings. I'm going to leave it at normal and this is what it normally comes with as normal. Uh, so we have co-ed genders. We're going to have both male and female students. Uh, we're going to start with only $20,000. That's actually not a lot of money. You're going to see that we're going to run out of money very fast. It's, I, I mean, it's almost broke. I'm, I'm tempted to start with 40, but we're going to stay with 20. Durability. This setting affects how the objects in your school will break down and need repairs. So there is sturdy, 
which would be the easy mode part. They, they break down a lot less often. Regular or weak, uh, which obviously would be the opposite of sturdy. We also have delinquency. So these are student settings. Delinquency. These students affect the chances that you will uh, receive delinquent students. So if when we're playing our second playthrough, I probably will go for like a... If we do a second playthrough of this, you know, we probably do orange jumpsuits and then we'd turn up the delinquency to like devilish and they're like really bad kids, right? Uh, but for this time, we're just gonna go with uh, with calm, which is the regular setting for normal difficulty. Uh, you can also go with angelic or devilish as the other two. Next, we have health. How likely students will get sick, dirty schools, and low hygiene decrease health. So we have healthy as the normal, but you can also come down to robust or sickly. And then littering, same thing, uh, normal. How often your students will litter in school? There's tidy kids or messy kids. So anyway, everything's normal. Let's give this a try and see what you guys think of it. Um, I've gone through the basic tutorial already and it kind of walks you through some of the things it wants you to start with. I'm gonna go my own route here and I'm gonna go ahead and skip the tutorial because I'd rather explain things myself and I actually personally don't like the restrictions that the tutorial has given me right off the bat because um, it wants me to place a specific room in a specific place um like right away which i'm gonna do that anyway but i don't necessarily want to do it where the game tells me to do it so okay welcome to academy uh, academia so at the top we have a lot of information here let's go through it this is our degrees for our for our teachers these are our different departments so we have uh regular teachers with a regular fundamental education in order for them to teach high school kids then we have ones that are a little bit more advanced maybe they have a master's degree right so the the first one would be a bachelor second is master's third one is a doctorate and you'd have these three different education levels of course Teachers that are more educated themselves are generally going to be considered in the game anyway as better instructors. And then they will also cost you more money as well. You have different departments as well. We'll get into that in a second. But these are just the counts of the different departments you have, right? And these are how many teachers you have in those departments, which right now is zero. Then we have the regular staff. These are people like the workmen, uh, which are down here already. We start with some workmen. Each of them have names of their own. And you can see that they take $200 a day each. Like I said, we're not going to start with a whole lot of money. For some reason, we're starting with 30 k I thought we were starting with... Oh, we had a principal's office advance given to us. So we start with... We, we started with $20,000, but then we're given an advance to build the prison, the, the principal's office because our to-do list already has us with a grant uh, started. We'll get into that in just a second. Uh, and then we have the population cap, of course, for students. And right now the population cap is 500. Now for the students, um, I'm not sure what this green bar does, but we have uh, our first, second, third, and fourth. And these are just the diff various different levels and grades. So you can think of this as freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. Talked about the money already. Finances is locked, so we can't see our in-depth finances. Not yet. Not until we get a uh, an accountant. Prestige. Schools rank is 1,000 out of 1,000. So you want to get your school's rank up, which means dropping that number lower. And then we also have a rival school that we're going to be competing with as well. So that's great. Now, we have current research we're going to be doing, but research is locked because we don't have a principal. So our principal is responsible for the research for things. Of course, we have our report card, which will show us how we did last uh, year. I believe the standard school year in this game is nine in-game days. And the days do not go by very fast. So it's it takes a while to get through a day, but it's nine days, I believe, is what a school year is. So right now we're in year zero. This is our build phase. We can start the school year as soon as we meet the minimum requirements to do so, which hopefully we will have at the end of this video. Next, we have homeroom. That's what the that's the current period. This will be readjusted to first period, second period, third period, etc. All the way up to like I think it's like seven or eight, um, and that just shows you what class is going on. And then you can modify your schedule with all the different periods that go on: first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. I guess. I don't know. Maybe there's a lunch there's a lunch period in there too, probably too. 
uh, game speed, pretty self-explanatory. To-do list, very similar to our grants panel from Prison Architect. So we're gonna have a lot of different grants we can do. There's some that are unlockable and it shows us all the different grants that are unlockable. Uh, the current grants that we've accepted. This comes, this grant that we've accepted already automatically comes with a $10,000 advance. That's why we have 30,000. Uh, and this is our to-do list. To complete this grant, we must do the things in the to-do list. Okay, so that's the interface down there. Now over here, all sorts of different stuff. And I like how they did this. There are certain things in Prison Architect's thing. I'm going to keep referencing that because that's what people on this channel are familiar with anyway. There's a lot of things about Prison Architect's organization, especially the rooms and zones that I don't like because it's like all over the place and I can't figure out where things are. And this does similar things with the all panel. They're not really in any real discernible order. I mean, some of the, the toilets and stuff are all in the same place, but for the most part, they're not really in alphabetical order or any, they don't really have any whole lot of sense there for the most part. However, you can tab through these and make sure that you get the right rooms for the right cause. And that is reciprocated and repeated. That, that pattern is repeated throughout all of these different menus. And I like that a lot. So let's get started. First thing to do, build a principal's office. Well, we kind of need to figure out how we want our school to be designed and look first. And there's a blueprint function for that too. We can lay out wall outlines, floor outlines, etc. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now just to kind of get a feel for how I want certain things to be. And uh, we'll just, for the magic of editing, we'll bring you right back into it. And we'll kind of explain what my beginner uh, school is gonna look like in a second. So uh, bear with me, I'll be right back. Okay, so absolute basic blueprint here. Uh, it's it's largely influenced on, and this is not going to be accurate. So I'm saying this, and my my brother's going to be editing this, but um, it, it's largely based on the school that I went to, right? And uh, and that's it, it's got it's obviously got some differences, uh, and I think it's got some differences that make it more efficient uh, as far as organizing organizing students and stuff, because. Uh, well, yeah, we'll see. I am going to keep some of the traits that I did like, though, like the little courtyard in the middle and stuff, but uh, I'm kind of deviating from it a lot. So uh, in my high school that I went to, you come through the front door, the gymnasium and locker rooms and all that stuff is immediately to your left. The offices and administration stuff is immediately to your right. And then just to pass that, you go into a cafeteria area where everyone eats. Now, this might change the location, but this is going to stay the cafeteria for now. Because uh, after you're done eating, then you, all the students would just kind of migrate over into the gym and have fun over there. Now, I don't know if this game lets you have like staggered lunch times. I imagine it does because you have individualized schedules. So what I'm hoping to do is have each grade level is going to have their lunch and stuff at, at different times. So we have some people going to class, some people going to uh, over here. And then these classrooms over here are going to be like our labs, our science labs, our computer labs, etc. will end up being on this side as well as any library or stuff we might have because that's where the it was when I went to school. Uh, there's a hallway that comes up here and then this is actually going to be outdoors. There's like a little courtyard and stuff that uh, people don't really hang out with. At least it didn't when I was in school, but it's there. Now, my senior year, this my high school added a huge like annex all the way over on the right side over here. And I only had one year in this big old annex that's over here. But now the freshmen and sophomores and stuff all have their classes kind of over here. And then the juniors and seniors kind of have their classrooms over here uh, and then the rest of the stuff. But my cl my high school also had students uh, mostly they had their classes here. They had to go walk this direction, go all the way around a hallway to get to the cafeteria. I'm amending this because I don't have a whole lot of room. I'm amending this and instead, freshman classrooms and sophomore classrooms are gonna be right here, okay? And then senior, juniors and seniors will be over here, okay? Or I could do it the other way around and flip it later. We'll see. I can flip it between school years. It's probably not a big deal. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna let these guys work on and get on with these because I'm having them eliminate some of these bushes and uh, we can go ahead and have them do some of these now too. But in order to build a classroom, we need to have a classroom for each grade level, at least one classroom for each grade level. So I've marked off zones. The recommended size is eight by five. And I think we're gonna go ahead and use that recommendation right now. So freshmen are gonna end up being here. These are gonna be four freshman classrooms for the time being. Now, I don't know whether or not we'll add a fifth. 
Again, this uh, design is subject to change. We may add a fifth that goes up this way and around. We'll see. Right now, only four classrooms. And honestly, we can probably even come this way a bit more, have this hallway be quicker. You know what? Let's do that. Let's have a fifth classroom right down here. We're going to go and uh, grab the blueprint tool, and uh, we just want to make another wall like this. I'm not sure where the, the actual door is going to go yet. Okay. So this will be our freshman classroom and uh, the three wide hallway. Perfect. Uh, let's bring it down like this, bring it over and over and we'll get rid of the planning lines like that. Okay, big old hallway here, right? Now, typically we have the lockers in the hallway too. And I'm not sure if students get lockers in this game or not, we'll see. But I wanna pause it really quick and take a look at research. Since we have a principal now, in her office. Honestly, I probably should give her a floor, shouldn't I? Yeah, go on, let's give her a floor. Uh, we'll go with just a concrete tile floor for now. So she has, I don't know, she doesn't have to look like she's outdoors in the sand anyway. Uh, okay, and again, this stuff is expensive. Look at this, like 20 bucks per tile. Ouch! Which, again, it's, it's gonna get, it's gonna get even more pricey. Okay, classrooms. Now, I have freshman classrooms marked here. We're going to have sophomore classrooms marked here. Again, it's all eight by fives. And it marks it as sophomore classroom. Now, the to-do list wants me to have juniors and seniors. I'm not going to do juniors and seniors yet because I'm just going to intake freshmen anyway. Okay? So, to, in order to satisfy the grant, we're going to do like what we do in Prison Architect. We're just going to go like this. And we're going to make one class for juniors and one class for seniors. And we're going to build these out. Okay. Now we're not going to build all of them out, but we're going to build most of them out. And actually, you know, are we only taking freshmen this first year? I feel like I'm going to take sophomores the first year too. Although it's just going to be more expensive with the teachers and stuff, but we might be, we might be all right. Uh, okay. So go to objects, classroom, and we need to position teachers tables. Now, again, this is my first time playing this. Th this game so uh, bear with me if my classroom design isn't up to your spec uh, or, or if it isn't like good enough for your standards or whatever like you should do it this way I don't know I'm just placing them and uh, hoping that it's okay so we're gonna have the uh, teacher's desk here and the chalkboard here and we'll just go ahead and do that for everything we might flippy flop it um, we might have some maybe some classrooms have it differently than others uh, so the desk is going to be here, I think. So we'll have that be there, and then the teacher's table can be there. I don't know. I kind of like it. Yeah, it'll be fine. Uh, so we'll go like that and like that. And then this will go like there and there. Right? The workmen will get on that. Uh, we're going to pause buying the stuff for now and talk about student chairs. Now, where is my doors? Where are my doors going to be? Well... I think I can actually mark, before I start doing this, I think I can actually mark the walls now. So uh, $100 for each. It's it's nuts. It's, it's nuts. Do I want beige walls for the classrooms instead of the brick? I feel like we want some sort of different colors for the interior walls as opposed to the exterior. I know I already have the offices as brick, but um, I know I'm feeling a different color wall for... I don't really like beige per se, but it's better than yellow and it's not wood. So uh, we'll go up like this. Now, because these are so expensive, we want to make sure we don't like waste money. So that means like marking a wall where we're going to put a door anyway. Right. So let's not do that. All the way through, all the way down here. All right. Already we've ate through a third of our cash just by doing that it's it's gonna get more pricey too all right so student desks let's take a look at it now i can click individually or i can drag a series so it doesn't look like the desks actually need like a whole bunch of spacing so for that reason i think it means we can probably they can probably fit behind the desks and stuff so i could have this be like this uh, this gives me 16 students in this classroom, which I think is a pretty good small 
uh, classroom. I think that's a pretty good uh, way of doing it. So we're gonna go like this and like this. Flip it around and go about like that and flip it around and go about like that. Now that is a lot of desks. Like that's a lot of money. So I'm really hoping, right? I gotta really hope that the grant gets satisfied and stuff, which we have to remark the, the rooms. These are actually aren't marked right. So not the junior here. We'll have freshmen here both. Yes, sophomore can be there. This one is gonna be a junior classroom. And then we're gonna do, let's quickly mark this as a senior room. Cause I don't really wanna build out another one. We'll quickly mark this one as a senior room. So when these rooms are all done and the workmen have built them all, um, then we will get another 10 grand, which actually isn't very much, but we're gonna get another 10 grand. Uh, let's rebuild, let's finish building the wall. So the, the door will end up being on this side where the, the row of desks isn't. So we'll just put the wall there like this and like this. And we'll go ahead and uh, get doors and go like that and like that. Okay. Uh, wait, no, we have to do two more doors, don't we? Yep, right here. There and there. Oh, okay. So hopefully they'll get on this. And we'll get we'll get uh, we'll get the money because we're gonna need it bad. So the next thing we have to do, I think, after this, is we're gonna want to hire staff. We're gonna want to hire like we can get accountants and all that stuff too. Oh, speaking of which, pause it really quick. Sorry, research. Since we have a principal now, we could do research. All right. So uh, we have basic facilities. This allows us to get things like male toilet, female toilet, gender neutral toilets kitchens and cafeterias very important things we're going to grab that then money manager is a possibility this unlocks accounting finances panels and bank loans which we may want to have but for now we're going to pause on that school cleaning very important thing uh school design you can start getting fence outdoor fences and different walls and all that stuff Human resources uh, unlocks the button to find the uh, find more button in the teacher hiring area. And then worker priority allows me to be a micromanager and assign work priorities. So this is how you would get them to not tear down all the bushes as their first task. Um, you'd get worker priority. For now, I'm just going to assign them to things that I want them to do in the order that I want them to do them. So when they're all done with these, and I anticipate they will be done with them shortly. Uh, at that point, I would like you guys to continue getting me more bushes uh, to be demolished so that we can continue to have uh, more money. If you could do that, please, that would be fun. It looks like one of them is going off to do that already, though. I guess because they're done, right? Social skills. Oh, research is complete. So basic research is done. Uh, right here. Basic facilities is done. Now, we could go down social skills if we want to, or school bus, or dishwashing mastery, or student discipline. Right, nice. Yes. Get him on patrol. Uh, but I think probably money manager is the way to go here, just so I can potentially get a bank loan if I need to. So I'm going to grab money manager. That cost me 2,500 bucks. We're down to only 11 grand left. Uh, but the grant is done. So we have a fully viable classroom for each of these guys. They don't even need to be indoors. You can have outdoor classrooms. Now that we have classrooms, we're able to start the school year, but we're not going to start the school year yet because... We don't have the basics of facilities that students need uh, in order to start the school year. So we're going to go back to our build and uh, we're going to, where is, uh, we need walls. We're going to make this wall come right up here. And what I want to do is I want to get some bathrooms right here, right? And in order to do that, now that I have basic facilities, I should be able to zone toilets. So female, male, and gender neutral. Well, let's do male and female. So uh, male toilets, they recommend it being seven by seven. So we can bring this, I'm not sure how big to make this. Let's make it like seven by seven, I guess here. Probably gonna have a lot of students using it. So we can go a little bit bigger if we want to too. I would butt it right up against the edge here and maybe that's the better call. It probably is actually, if we go like this, 
It's not really fair to the girls. Because, uh, nah, this is supposed to be my gym area, though. Ah, you know. You know, guys, the way my high school designed it, the girls' restroom is here, and the boys' restroom is here. So we can actually do the same thing. Um, there's multiple, there's more than one restroom, but uh, there is one like this. So we can go seven by seven here. You can actually just go wider, why not? I think there's like a utility closet or something here though, so. I don't know how big that needs to be. Let's go eight by seven. And then for the female toilet, it'll be right here. We'll go another eight by seven. Yeah, why not? So both of the, both of the toilets are right here. Now in order to build that, we need sinks, toilet cubicles, indoors. Male toilets need sinks, toilet cubicles, indoors. But in the objects panel, if we go down to toilet, we actually also have urinals as well. So uh, for the male toilet, we'll probably put urinals along this wall. So let's just kind of put them like this. Now this is a lot of money. Look at this, $750. It's a lot. We don't want to go super crazy on that. Toilet cubicles are even more expensive at 400 each. Again, we don't want to go super crazy on that, but I do want to give them a, a way of like using a lot of toilets here. So I'm probably going to go, um, it looks like this will work though. It does look like that will work. How many bath, like that's a lot of cubicles, man. We can go along the outer wall and then we can go uh, here and then we can go here. Holy crap, that's a lot of toilets. It'll work though. All right, let's put in like, let's do three for now. Uh, female toilet, same thing. Let's do three along the back wall here. They don't have, they're not gonna use the urinals. So we'll put in an extra two toilets here like this. Uh, for the sinks, we want them to be, um, let's put it along this wall. So we can put like, Put it along like this three sinks there and thankfully we don't have to run the plumbing uh we'll put the sinks along this wall here so we'll go about like that and then hand sanitizer right by the door and then hand sanitizer right by the door okay so the door for this will end up being here and here okay this will be the bathroom so let's get the uh Get things started here. Where is the walls right here? I think we'll keep it concrete unless it's in the unless it's a, a wall for a classroom. I think we'll keep it like if it's a big area like this. Like I, I think we'll keep it to be brick walls because they look okay. This is so expensive. It's so expensive. <laughs> uh, so that's where the door is. So we're gonna go like that, like that, like that, and like that. I guess I can't do that because they have to remove that stuff still. So wait, wait for them to remove the uh, the trees. All right, they're building our toilets. Now our kids can actually use the bathroom. The next thing we're gonna have to want to build, we're gonna want to build though, is the uh, cafeteria and stuff. And that's by, by the way, that what what just happened. That's what it does when it switches to the next day. So you start every day at 6 a.m. And when it gets to like, I think 5 or 6 p.m. I didn't catch the time, but when it gets up there, then you, uh, it switches over to the next day like that. So the days, they don't go by very, like that was all one day, right? So the days don't go by too fast. We're going to take sophomores too. And I think we can afford 15 because we have 16 desks in each classroom. So uh, this should be okay. Now that we've done this though, let's go ahead and rezone these. So this is back to being a freshman class and this is back to being a sophomore class. And then this is also gonna be sophomore all the way up here. Yes, okay. I'm worried we don't have the budget for this, but I'm trying to build this out with expansion in mind, right? And I already have a kind of an idea of positioning of certain types of rooms. So we're just gonna be really spaced out for a while, okay? Are they still building this wall? Uh, I don't need it built. We could save money if I don't have it built. So we get refunded on the construction of the wall because they haven't done it yet. 
and they're almost done clearing out all the shrubs. They're going to come over here and clear these out, and then they'll get started on the bathrooms. Now, in the meantime, we want to hire... We can do accounting, hire teachers. Big advance for that. Snack time. We get a little bit of an advance for uh, vending machines and... Vending machine snacks aren't super healthy, but your students need to eat something, right? So you can have vending machines and stuff in this main hallway. So as they walk through here, they'll be able to get to vending machines if they want to. And then I, I kind of wish that we would get profit from those vending machines. I'm not sure we do. Let's try accounting. So that's the first grant we'll grab. And we're going to build another office to do that. Let's get rid of the planning lines. because that's a little bit annoying to see. And then we want to go ahead and clone. Now, I think there's a clone tool here. I think. I thought I saw one. But I, I, I don't remember. I thought I saw one. Oh, well. Uh, let's go office. And we want to have... We'll say it. This is a fax machine. So let's put the accountant's office right here. And then the fax machine will go right next to this one. And then the filing cabinet can go here. We're going to mark this right as an office. Right? Oh! It does that, does it? It does that. It merges the office. Oh. It merges the office. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Well, I could still I could still do this. We're just going to bring this out one. Uh We're going to have to come out this way one too. We'll just bring this out one. That way we can separate it still. All right. Then we want to demolish this wall, this wall, and this wall. Principal's office is no longer considered indoors. That will change in a second. And then the door. Again, we'll want to... Now, can we move it? Sell. So I can make it staff only. or I'm just going to sell the door, I guess. Uh, we'll sell this door too. And it looks like it's going to sell. Do workmen have to sell it? Yeah, workmen are going to sell it. Okay. So then we're going to take this door and we're going to put that here and here. Okay. So at least the offices aren't merged now. Now what I should be able to do is go back to office and do something like this now. That's great. We can cancel these things and reposition them. Unfortunately, that means this, the fax machine can't go over next to it, but uh, whatever, I guess. Uh, admin table will scoot up, and then we'll put the fax machine next to her like that, but it's fine. And this, again, we want this. I want this whole area to just be like offices. I don't need them to... Oh, they're going to do all the toilets first. So I can't research until this, this office is valid. It needs to be indoors, so they, I won't be able to research until they move this way. Build 300 objects, sophomore builder. Yeah, when I was playing around with the game to try to learn the basics of it, I earned the freshman builder thing, I think, so. I think it's build 100 objects. It's probably another achievement out of 1,000. Maybe 500, I don't know. Uh, okay, so mail toilet's done. Granted, it's still grass, but I'm not concerned with the floor pattern just yet. Female toilet's here. Now, what we could do is also put one more t one more door in here. But I like the... Uh, uh, nah. Nah, I'm not going to. Because I, I want to be able to have, like, as many stalls in here as possible. This is, like, this is big enough for expansion, right? All right. They're going to build that. Now, what's wrong with this? It's not considered indoors. Oh, right. They removed the... Uh, they removed that tree, and I never marked it to have the wall put it back in. All right, that office is going to get done. So 1200 bucks. Our to-do list right now is research money manager. We did that. Build an office assigned to an accountant. So all we have to do now is simply hire an accountant. And we are done. 
Good. Next grant. Hire teachers. Snack time. Let's try... Oh, hire teachers is intimidating because they're so expensive. And as soon as I hire them, their budget, like the amount of money I pay them, just starts ticking down. So maybe snack time so I can get money. Let's do that. So vending machines... I'm not sure. I'm thinking about where the vending machines are going to go here. I, I, it might be cool to have some in the cafeteria, but I kind of wanted some in the hallways here. So why don't we take the snack time grant. And then we're going to probably do vending machines. I need four of them. Is that is that what it is? Four of them. So we can put one. Uh, let's put one there and there. And then we'll put one, uh, say, here and here. All right. With those done, that grant is satisfied. And that'll be it. Now, they won't have a lunch time. But at least they'll be able to eat food with the vending machines. Okay. Uh, nutritional needs. That's what I wanted to get to. Students can't study on an empty stomach. Build a kitchen and cafeteria. Okay. $10,000 advance. We are not looking good on money right now. <laughs> kitchen and cafeteria. So... Um, first thing I want you guys to do is get rid of all of these so they're out of my way and also so I can get money. Money is important. Next, after that, let's talk about kitchen. I think kitchen's going to be back here. Cafeteria is all this. So we will mark cafeteria, room, nutrition, cafeteria. We will mark all of this. Now, it recommends 11 by 11. I'm going to go bigger. I'm going to go about... Actually, what size is the kitchen supposed to be? Five by five. So let's bring five by five first. Probably need a bigger kitchen if we're having a bigger cafeteria. So how about we go five by eight in the kitchen? The cafeteria can be literally everything else. So it'll go about goes about like this. The cafeteria. Very, very big cafeteria. Don't worry, we're not gonna use all that space yet. Uh, build. So inside, it needs to be indoors. So we're going to need to enclose it because this whole big room is not built yet. I mean, I could do that if I wanted to go bankrupt. So I'm not going to do that. Um, so instead, we're just going to bring... Uh, how do I want to lay out the kitchen, actually? Objects. Food counter, plate vendor, water fountain. Where's the kitchen? All right. So we need a stove, refrigerator, and a kitchen sink. Refrigerator. Each refrigerator can store one food crate. The number of food crates delivered per day will depend on the number of refrigerators in your school. It costs $46 in electricity every day. Ugh. All right, we're going to put the we'll put the fridge back here. That's one. Uh we can go two. If I do this, I won't be able to put them back to back, but I think it's probably okay. Let's just put them along this wall here like this. So two fridges for now. Uh, stoves. Good for cooking pink slime. Ugh. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll put the stoves, let's say... I'm, I'm hesitant to go along the wall. I think I want the sink to be along the wall. We'll put the sink... In the back, though. Put the sink here. Yeah. And then I think the stoves will go in the front here for now. We'll put the stoves along this wall. Uh, two will be good because we're going to have a bunch of kids. Okay. This will be... That's it for this. So we're up to 23,000 right now. Build the brick wall. We're going to want an entrance to the kitchen to be there. And then also we'll have another entrance back over here. Okay. Good. Now the food line, I want kids to come through here, get their food this way, and then go to sit down. So uh, as far as the traffic of the place goes. So we're going to want to get the objects. Cafeteria. There it is. So we have the plate counter. This is where they turn in their plates. So they, when they're done with their food, they turn them in over here. And I kind of feel like that should be on this wall. So now I'm thinking maybe we designed this wrong. Can I move things or is it, I had to sell it for, okay, pause. Sell it for 300. 
How much does it cost to buy it? Am I losing money on that? No, I'm not. I can sell it for the full value. So now I'm thinking we go here instead. That way they come in here. They get their food. Hmm. I mean, the kitchen staff can just go get it, right? Bring it over. I'm going to leave it. I, I want it to be similar to the way my high school was. Uh, so we're gonna we're just going to leave it. It's fine. It's, everything's going to be fine. So the uh, cafeteria plate counter is going to be over here, I guess. So we'll have it be maybe like that and that. For now, those two. Food counter is where they're uh, serving up the chow. And I think we're going to put it along these two walls like that. And then water fountains will go uh, here. Mm, let's bring them over here like this. Okay, water fountains there, food over here. Good. I think probably now we want doors on the kitchen there and there. And then the only thing left is to get the tables and stuff for the cafeteria. Cafeteria table and benches. So the benches are kind of cool. I like how this does it where it shows me, you know, the fact that they don't need any space behind it, right? So uh, we can put the, the tables. One there. These are benches, not tables. Kind of like that. And then like that, like that, and like that, and like that. And then the table, notice how the table has that, that it's, it's just an indicator of where the people are. So I can fit it here. It's just indicating where the benches need to be in order for them to be able to use it. So we're gonna do that. I think that's enough tables, enough food service and everything to uh, satisfy the requirements to have this count as a cafeteria. At least I'm hoping it does. Let's build the walls. So expensive. Ugh, walls are stupid. Does the cafeteria need to be indoors? It does. It does. Ooh, that's a lot of money. We're gonna need a loan. Like, we're gonna need a loan. I don't think there's a reality where this doesn't equal a loan being needed at some point. Um, let's put a door here just to make this be indoors now. Just to get this to count as indoors. And again, we're not going to put floors and stuff in until we're actually, you know, profitable and stuff. Let's get rid of planning lines. Sometimes the planning lines, they won't get removed because I put doors where wall plans are, right? So. All right. So... Are we done now? Can we start our school year after we hire teachers? We have toilets for the students. We have we have classrooms and we have the cafeteria. But we need to start making money because right now we're just costing ourselves money every day. So I think we're gonna start the school year. Uh, right now we have, uh, it's, I think at 6 p.m. it goes to the next day. So if I don't start this now, then I'll have to wait another day. I think, I don't know how, I don't know if that's how it works, but I think that's how it works. Bank loan, we're gonna need one to hire teachers. So if I grab, oh, it's only a $10,000 loan. I can't grab anything else. There's a 10% interest rate. So I will I will borrow 10 grand, I will owe 11, okay? Now, just like, pris like, just like a lot of games, I don't think it's just like Prison Arctic, just like a lot of games, right? You will pay the, the full interest amount on this regardless of when you pay it off. So as soon as I hit borrow, I owe 11,000. Like that's basically it. So we're gonna be paying 200 a day, but I need teachers and I, I can't hire teachers if I don't have money. So I'm gonna borrow this. And now once this grant gets done, we should get 4,000 bucks and then I can grab this, which advances me another 15. But I need to have teachers. Okay, so uh, we're going to probably want science, math, history, and language. We'll get art and PE next after that. 
Uh, and I think maybe only... Hmm... We're only getting two grades, right? Admissions. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to end up getting $4,000 a day from this admission. 15 students. That's 30 students total. Yeah, this is enough for 30 students. Easy. All right. So I think we're ready to start the school year as soon as I've hired teachers. But I'm not going to hire them yet until I can get the grant because it's going to start ticking down my money. Like, that's just going to happen. So we need to wait one more day. We need another work day for that. There are no cook assigned to the kitchen. Hire some cook. Hire some cook, it says. This doesn't count as indoors yet. I need my workmen to finish that. Which they are just now arriving on the scene. Good. Okay. Nutritional needs requires that I hire two cooks. So, this isn't indoors yet, but it will be. Let's hire two cooks. One, two. As soon as that cafeteria blueprint finishes, we get the money. So then we want to hire teachers. Or drinking water. Hey. Ooh, place. This is really easy. We've already placed three. Let's grab this really quick. We're going to hire. We're going to just grab a water fountain and pop it there. And you know what? You know what? Let's grab a water fountain and pop it over here instead. We'll even put another one. Why not? We're getting paid for it. Oh, cafeteria needs a door to get into it. It's not just this one. So this is the main door I think the students are going to come through. And we're going to use the double doors on this. So we'll pop it right there. They'll come into the classroom with the double doors. Erase the planning lines there. Okay. So we finished that one. Awesome. Next Student transportation. Nope. Hiring teachers. We now have 36,000 bucks, and that's pretty much all we're going to get until we start the school year. So, we need to focus on this. this. This has to be a thing we do. So, we need to hire teachers. Go to the department screen. So, language, math, science, art, history, and PE. These are the subjects. We don't necessarily have to have a teacher for every subject, I don't think. Let me double check that. We absolutely do. Okay. Well, with six teachers and four classrooms, that's not going to work. So we're going to need to have the other six classrooms too. Fine. Whatever. We will. Okay. How does this work? Well, there's icons next to each teacher that dictates their level of education. So this person here has a master's degree. This person here has a bachelor's degree. And you can see that just by looking at it by the number of medals. If they had a third medal, that's most likely doctorate. I haven't seen that yet, but it's most likely doctorate. Over here, we have teachers that are in the pool. These are ones you've already hired and are available to be assigned to a department. This is, of course, the hiring screen. Over on the right side, we see their name, the level of their education, how much money I have to pay them immediately upon hiring them, as well as their average, the salary that they want per day. And then here is their competency. So you want to hire teachers that are good at certain competency, right? So if I want, say, for example, an art teacher, I might look at this guy who is good at art, 34, right? Is there anyone else that's better at art than a 34? I don't know. Let's check it. So if anyone better than art at a 30 than a 34. So I'm just going to come th scroll through here. That is the 34. And now this one is 45, but look at the difference. He's got a master's, okay? He wants 5600 now and 622 per day. Like he's wanting almost double the money. So he ain't, I ain't going to hire him now. Not right now. I don't have the money for that. I can get better teachers when I'm a better school. Okay. Uh, this is a good history teacher too. So I think we're going to hire Renee Futrell. This is an art teacher. Now we can hire him to a department immediately. If we just select that department before we hire him, we can also take him out of that department, put him in the pool and then put him in the right department. But to hire him directly to the apartment, select the department you want and then hit hire. He'll get immediately assigned to that department. Now, Renee is going to teach certain grade levels. Which grade levels do we want him to be able to, te to teach? Well, right now, we only have freshman and sophomore, so we're just going to do freshman and sophomore only, okay? Next. Well, next could be whatever teacher we want. So 
Let's pick one that's really good at something. How about math? Evelyn Byrne. 33. Is there anyone else that's better at math than a 33? Well, Clarentha is a 32. She wants 3,600 and 400 a day. She wants less, and she's better at it, so we're going to keep her. Uh, 33, 33, 33. Who is anyone better at a, than a 33? No. So Evelyn is my math teacher. Okay? David, history. I don't have anyone in history. Anyone better than a 33 in history? Let's just take a quick scroll through here. And I have a 31. That's pretty close. You want 3,600 and 400 a day. You want 3,500 and 388 a day. So you're still my man. And David is the winner. David Arnold for history. There you go. We need science, language, and PE. So let's take a look and see if we can find anybody that's exceptionally good at science. 27. Donette is a 27. Uh, we have uh, Taisha. Taisha. It's a 28. She's kind of overall, all around good on most multiple subjects, too. Uh, yeah, we don't have a language teacher yet, either. And this one, Charlotte's pretty good at language. Nobody's better than a 32 at language, right? I don't think so. So Charlotte's going to be my language teacher. You're okay at art, too, as a fallback, but you're my language teacher, okay? So I need science and PE. So where's my science one? This is, so Taisha is a 28. And let's take a look. 26, you want the same amount of money? No, you want less. Uh, I mean, less salary sounds good to me right now. For an extra two points, making less, I'm all right with that. Uh, what else? 27. Hello. But you want the same as Taisha does for a 28. Uh, 33. Yeah. All right. I think it's going to be Eve. All right. Eve is going to be my science teacher at 33. And that all we need now is PE. So who's my best PE teacher? Well, it looks like it's so far for the cheap ones anyway, for people who want less money. Uh, it's Clarentha at 26. Uh, you have 28 for Christopher Boland. And you want less per day. Christopher Boland is looking pretty attractive as a candidate right now. Yep. Okay, Christopher Boland is my PE teacher. Done. So I now have a teacher in every department. But I don't have a gym for the PE teacher. So they're going to have to share classrooms and stuff, and that's going to suck. Now, luckily, we have some money left over, so we can, we can go ahead and make more classrooms if you want to. No Man is an Island. Uh... Build a common area so students can have some fun and meet friends. Click on zones and the special room tab to find the common area button. Oh, I don't know what that is, but cleanliness. Hire janitors. Place trash cans. That's going to be important, too. Uh, I think probably we go ahead and do that. Cleanliness. Hire janitors. Although this one here is, is easy money. It doesn't really cost us anything. We just have to research social skills. So let's go to research. Social skills is here. It costs two grand. Now that costs us two thousand, but we're getting the advance for that. So basically, yeah, basically this pays for research. If you hit spacebar right after you click it, it thinks you want to cancel it. So that basically just pays for research. So we'll get on that, but I want to build more classrooms too. So let's get objects, classroom, and we're gonna do. Uh, we need we have six teachers so let's get six classrooms so here here uh over here we'll go like that like that and then the desks come in like that yep and over here it comes in like that and then we build the beige walls. <laughs> you know, I'm really tempted to just go all freshmen here, but we don't have enough. Like, we really can afford, right? To have both, because this is enough classes, I think, to cater to two, to two grade levels. 
But I was tempted to go full freshman on this for the first one. All right, so we have... Uh, there it is. Done. We have that many classrooms. So I think we're I think we're ready. I think we're ready to start the school year. Uh, so we can hopefully make some money. Hopefully we're profitable. And uh, when this research is done, we can build common areas, which will probably be this one, the hallways, and uh, maybe these little hallways here. I'm not entirely sure, but this is sort of the start of our school, guys. So if you like this, I know it was a little bit crazy, a little bit hectic, and I get a lot of that is my inexperience in the game, right? I don't, I, I know what I want, but I'm not entirely sure how to do it within the budget the game's giving me. So this is a little bit more like, a, this is literally a first playthrough. So um, if you like this, leave comments down below, let me know. This is uh, Let's Try Academia School Simulator. We'll see you next time, hopefully, bye.